Hi folks, uh, this is Vineet from the urbanastronomer.com. Um, so today I just wanted to go over how we can actually preview a telescope using Stellarium uh, before actually going in for a purchase. So this might be more useful for a beginner because I remember when I was picking my first telescope, um, I eventually went with the Astromaster 130EQ, but then I had a lot of doubts whether I should actually go for the 127EQ. Now, one thing that we can do, there are many other factors, of course, um, but if we have, if you're not looking at the mount and things like that, but we are just looking for comparison between the OTAs. So this is something that Stellarium can actually help with uh, because based on the uh, F ratio and things like that, and what uh, uh, IPs that we are going to use, Stellarium gives a good preview of what we can expect to see in the telescope it also takes into account like whatever location you are living in uh, what is the condition of the sky based on the database that they have so we can get a good preview of what we can expect to see uh, from our telescope so for the purpose of this uh, video let's take a look at uh, the two telescopes which i was considering when you know i initially did my purchase like many years ago so the first one is the 130 eq Okay, so this is also a reflector telescope um, with an EQ mount from Celestron. And then there is a 127 EQ power seeker, which is also a reflector telescope with a uh, EQ mount. Now these look to very similar, right? So if, if you're a beginner, you look at 127 EQ. Okay, it's an EQ mount, it is 127 mm aperture. This is 130 mm aperture. So why, why does Celestron have two of these uh, telescopes? It's a bit confusing initially. Now we can, take a look at the specifications. And one of the main things that we should look for here is, uh, apart from the aperture, of course, which is 130 in this case, and in case of uh, the power seeker, it is 127. This is a slight difference, but not, not by that much. So the main thing that we need to look at is the F ratio over here, right? So, so F5, so that is basically means 6, 650 divided by 130 mm, focal length by aperture, 650 by 130 is 5, and for power seeker, uh, it is 1000 by 127, which is 7.87, right? So what is the difference? What does it uh, mean for this test group? So another thing to see is, um, if you look at the eyepiece, uh, both of them had the same eyepiece. Um, let's see. Okay, actually I'm mistaken. So there is a, a 20 mm eyepiece and a 4 mm eyepiece uh, with a finder scope and a Barlow lens. So that's great. So you have a 3x Barlow lens as well. And in this case, uh, there's a 20 and 10 mm eyepiece and a finder scope. So, uh, so let's, it's, let's take a look at like, let's uh, take a look at what we can actually do with Stellarium um, to preview uh, both of these OTAs. So in case you don't have Stellarium already, just head to stellarium.org and they have Stellarium versions for all uh, different OSs. You can probably get, um, so I'm going, I have the Windows 64 bit and that's what I'm going to use for this demo. So I now have uh, Stellarium opened up on my uh, computer and this is how it looks. This is showing me the current time for Bangalore. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, the sun is up so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to fast forward so that we can get to the evening so it's the western sky and let's stop that there and we have venus in view here so we can take a look at uh, venus for the comparison okay so once we select an object in stellarium like this um we can basically we have the options for uh, uh, tell us okay so before that so let's let's see so i have set the location as bangalore so for that basically you go to this left edge there's something called a location window where you can type in any location that you want and you can select it okay so that's what i have selected so i i selected my home city location which is it is actually now called bangalore not bangalore so bangalore india okay 
earth bangalore india okay and then um, we have this uh, view options window so there is something called as light pollution or take from location set we just click on take from locations database and you can see how bad the light pollution is in my city it's set to 9 <coughs> now uh, let us select venus and i'm going to select this ocular view over here okay so i select the ocular view by default it has selected a mid atx this is what i was looking at earlier so there is something like a configuration option over here right so here we have these tabs i'm going to go to telescopes and i'm going to say add telescope and i'm going to rename this as celestron astromaster 130 eq now uh, from the website we can actually pick the uh, focal length and aperture for this so the focal length is 650 aperture is 130 and focal ratio is f5 right and similarly for power seeker it is uh, 1000 127 f7.87 so let's go back to stellarium i'm going to just set my focal ratio as i'm going to set my focal ratio as 650 and the diameter was 130 mm okay and that's done then i'm going to add the Celestron Power Seeker 127 EQ. So here the focal length was 1000, and the diameter was 127. And then the name here, right? 130, 650. And we are done. I'm going to just leave the other options because we just want to compare the size as of now. <clears throat> now for the i pieces there are a lot of options but this let's add the i pieces that were for the i pieces also let's take a look at what are the i pieces so here is a 20 mm and a 10 mm i piece with the astromaster and there is a 20 mm and 4 mm i piece and a barlow lens a 3x barlow lens uh, which is coming with the power seeker right so i'm just going to set this uh, afov to uh i'm just going to um, the afov i'm just going to leave it as default So I'm just going. To, I'm field stop also. I'm just going to leave it default for now. In case you need to set it, you can do some research for your eyepieces and then enter those values. So I'm just going to say 20 mm. Then there is a 10 mm. So focal length is 10. Then there is a 4 mm. Focal length is 4. And there is also a lens which is a barlow lens which is already 3x barlow lens which is already there in uh, stellarium so we will not uh, uh, you know uh, we will not we don't need to add that okay so now we are looking at venus here so we can switch the telescope to the one that we created which is celestron astromaster 130 eq and let's select we just selected 20 mm lens okay so in a celestron astromaster with a 20 mm i piece this is what you can expect to see okay this is how venus will look through the telescope now if we switch the power seeker uh, switch to the power seeker so this is how venus looks okay so the same i piece there is no um, barlow lens here with the same i piece this is how venus looks now let's take a look at uh let's go back to astromaster and let's take look at the 10 mm i piece so in the, with the 10 mm i piece this is how it will look in the astromaster 130 and this is how it would look in the um uh power seeker 
but power seeker actually has a 4 mm eyepiece so let's switch to the 4 mm eyepiece and this is the view with the 4 mm eyepiece so it also comes with a 3x barlow lens right so let's select the 3x barlow lens and if you were you are to have the 3x barlow lens and the 4 mm eyepiece uh, on the Celestron Power Seeker 127, this is what you can expect to see, which is basically you can get a good magnified view of Venus. Now, with the same setting on, um, uh, with the same, if you had a Barlow lens and a 4 mm eyepiece for your 130 EQ, you would get a slightly smaller view. That's because it has a shorter focal length and that f ratio is um, f5 instead of f7.87, like in the Power Seeker's case. So, when that number after the f ratio is larger it usually means that it is zoomed in a lot more and it will be less brighter the object that you see with the same eyepiece for the same eyepiece okay so let's actually take a look at jupiter 2 now it's just showing blank and that is because um, basically there's the ground so i'm just i mean it's below the ground so i'm just going to remove the ground here and there you can see it. So with a 4 mm um, uh, eyepiece with a 3x barlow, this is how Jupiter looks in a 130 EQ, and this is how it looks in a power seeker, right? Let's go back to 10 mm with nothing. This is how it looks. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, the Orion Nebula. So if you had uh, a 127 EQ, you are zoomed in like this. If it's a 130 EQ, you have a larger. That is why the 130 EQ gives you a wider uh, field of image, which is why it is better suited for a deep sky object. Of course, only if you have great skies. And this is, uh, uh, I mean, I can tell you for sure, this is not the view that you get. <laughs> but for planets, it will be pretty close. Uh, but there are deep sky objects, you really need good skies to actually appreciate it. So if we, for deep sky objects, obviously you want to be using a, a longer focal length eyepiece. So with the 20 mm, this is how it looks for 130 EQ. And this is how it looks for 127 EQ. So, you know, based on what you're trying to view, so you can basically decide uh, what your first telescope should be. Um, or basically this helps this is one of the decision parameters right when you get all the default equipment it depends on your budget and a lot of other things maybe you can't get a different barlow lens on your own for now so there are a lot of things to consider so all of those are things considered you just want to compare to OTS Stellarium is actually a great tool where you can get a preview of what to expect so I hope you found this video useful if you did please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel Thanks a lot for watching.